Hello there, welcome to part eight of my PowerShell tutorial series. In the last video, uh, we went over uh, some switch statements, some if statements, uh, but so far all we're able to really do is take one thing at a time and that just doesn't really get a whole lot of things done in programming and coding and scripting. Uh, so today we're going to be going over some loops. Uh, specifically, we're going to be going over the for each loops. There's three kinds of for each loops in PowerShell. So we're going to be taking a look at each one, just seeing a little bit of differences. And before we look at those, I'm actually going to show you what we would have to do right now to go through our same name file and look up some config files based on those names. So if I open up my file explorer here, we're going to see my name file. We have Tim, John, Paul, Mike, and Thomas. And then in here, we have a folder called names. In here, we have a folder with all of our names. And inside those folders, there's a file called config. And the config file has, this is a config file for Mike. And then if we go into Paul, we have, this is a config file for Paul. So let's go ahead and let's get started. And seeing how we would do this right now, how we would get all of these files, and then we're going to show you the faster way uh, to get all of these files based on this list here. So let's actually go ahead and let's start that here. So let's just set our strict mode here. Let's turn that on. Let's just run this, get that going here. So let's create our file path for that name file here. So we already know that that is in our C data and names.txt. We already know that this file path is correct. So for this example, I, once again, we are not going to be doing an if statement to make sure that the path is valid. In a typical script, you would want to do that. And eventually in these videos where we're going to start building entire scripts, we're going to be putting all these pieces together. But in this video, we just really want to focus on learning these loops properly. So here we're going to initialize our variable of names here. So let's get the content in the path of file path here. So let's just run these lines here. And we do get our names, which is Tim, John, Paul, Mike, and Thomas. So right now, if we wanted to get these files, we could do it um, one of two ways, really. Um, so what we could do is we could set up a variable called current and we're going to set that to names and we're going to put it to the first name in our list and then what we could do is we could do a get content in the file in the path and let's just put in that file path here so c data names and then in here, we're going to be doing dollar sign current to get our name and then config.txt. So if we run that here, we see we get this as a config file for Tim. Now there would be another way of doing this here that we haven't seen yet. So we can actually take these two lines and put them into one. Uh, to make it a little bit more efficient. So if we do a get content in the path here, and let's copy paste this path, and we're just going to modify it just a little bit here. So instead of doing dollar star uh, dollar sign current, what we're going to do is we're actually going to reference our array directly. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to put a dollar sign and then an open close parentheses. Now what this does, this tells the string that this whole section here is actually going to be a reference to a variable. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a dollar sign names, and then we are going to reference our array here. And let's see if we get, this is a config file for Tim. Now what we would need to do to get it for all five names, we would currently need five lines, we would need to change all of these. And then if you made a mistake in one of these values, you would get an error. 
But if we don't make any mistakes, we get no errors. But if we did accidentally put a five here, we would get an error and that wouldn't be good because then we would have to go find which line it took. But we do have it here, it does work. It is faster than manually going in and getting the files through this path here and copying and pasting that somewhere else. But let's actually see if we can get this to be even faster and less lines of code. So the first one we have is, obviously all of these are gonna be called for each loops, uh, but this is a very direct for each uh, loop. It's not using a commandlet, not using a method. It's literally something built into PowerShell just called for each. Um, so what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be doing for each and then we're going to be doing an open and close parentheses. And inside your parentheses, you're going to declare a variable that is going to be your iterator almost, uh, you can call it. So we're going to do this as capital name. And we're going to do it singular. And we're going to put in names. So what this does, this really says for each name that is in the array of names. So if we actually go ahead and we just print out the name here, we will see that we get all the names. So now what we can actually do is if we take our get content lines, we change this to name, you will see that we will get the content of each file in just three lines of code really only one complicated line, you can say it's complicated, compared to these five lines. Now you can imagine if this text file had, let's say a thousand names or 2000 names, you would have to make 2000 lines compared to three lines. This will never change anymore. As many, line, as many names as you want in this file, this will be the only lines of code you will need. So that's definitely much handier than typing it in. It'll be way quicker for you. Less chance of errors. It automatically stops once the names stop in the file. You don't have to worry about that. Now there are two other types of for each loops in PowerShell that you could use. Um, our second one is actually a built-in commandlet called for each object. Now what you can do with that is you can actually pipe your array to the commandlet and then tell the commandlet to execute a process. So let's take a look at that here. So if we take our array and then we pipe it to for each object, and then we have a parameter called process, and we open and close bracket, um, curly brackets here. And we can do get content, and we're just gonna copy paste this here. Now what's different about the for each object is actually the syntax we're gonna need to reference our current value that's being passed in, which is actually gonna be a dollar sign underscore. So if we run that, we will see that it does work. Now what the dollar sign underscore means, it means it grabs the current value that is passed in by the pipe. So this entire code basically takes a name at a time. Then for each of those names, it's going to get the content of C data names, the current name that's being passed in, config.txt. So that's how that one works. So they work very, very similar and very similar ways. Uh, performance wise, they're very, very similar. The next one that I'm going to show you is actually the fastest method. Um, in this example, since we only have five names, they all execute quite fast. Um, but once again, once you're in those larger data sets, like 10,000, even really anything over a hundred elements, kind of like the array and array lists, I would consider using this method. But I mean, best practice, if you want to use the method call every time. I personally think it's probably going to be your best bet uh, for your most efficient code. And this way, if your list ever grows past 100, you're not stuck with inefficient code or having to go back and change the code 
so it runs a little bit faster because you're noticing it's a little slow. So let's take a look at that here. So if we do dollar sign names here and we do a dot, and we do an F, we see a for each option here. So let's click on that here. And then we're gonna do the open and close parentheses. Now to do something with this for each, you're gonna to have to put an open and close curly brackets. Now this is where you're gonna put your code very similarly to this for each object line here, because it's still passing it in through sort of a pipe. Um, it's just through the method call. So the method is going to be calling this all the time. And to reference that value, we're going to be using the dollar sign underscore again. So let's copy that into this code right here. And let's run this. And we see that we get all the config files. So these three different ways of writing it to the end, I mean, we do get down to one line. Most of these are three lines compared to five lines. But like I said, again, if we had a names file of 20 names, 50 names, this exponentially gets way, way worse. This is efficiency N, probably even worse than that at this point. Um, but at least here, we can solidly say it'll always stay three lines. We can compact it a little bit more and get it into one line. Um, but if you want to keep it readable, keep the format nice, three lines, executes much faster, less chance of errors. Don't do things iteratively. Try to always use a loop when you can. In the next video, we're going to be going over some of the other types of loops because we still have four loops, which is not a for each loop. So the difference between those two really is a for each loop is when you're working with an object, you're going to be referencing that object, but not necessarily modifying the object. So in all of these cases here, we can't edit the value that is inside of names. That's not what this what these loops are meant for. That's more of your for loops and your while loops and your do until loops and your while do loops. Um, so all those types of loops are very useful as well if you're just wanting to repeat certain code X amount of times. Um, whereas these are mostly used if you have code that you want to execute once for each type of object, like once for each user. I'll be honest with my code that I write um, for work, uh, for each loops are definitely the most common things that I write. Um, but we're going to be taking a look at the other loops because there are some examples where those loops will come in handy for you. So I will see you on the next video. Make sure to please like and subscribe.